<laughs> that was absolutely delicious. The homily rice is just so delicious with that thick coconut curry. I'm ready to go to Thailand. I'm ready, I'll be cooking. I'll open up my Masuman shop and I'm ready. Hey guys, Jet Teela here, and today I'm cooking with award-winning TikTok chef, Eitan Bernath. At just 18 years old, Eitan has already cut his teeth on multiple Food Network shows like Chopped and Guy's Grocery Games, and is now the principal culinary contributor to the Drew Barrymore Show. I sent Eitan some of Thailand's best ingredients, and we are gonna be cooking Thai food together at home. He's in New York, I'm here in LA, but through the magic of Zoom, we'll be cooking together. Let's get started. Eitan Bernat, thanks for joining me today here, brother. Thank you for having me, that was quite the intro. I'm super excited to be cooking with you. I'm hungry, I am very, very excited. So today, uh, my job is really to be your Thai culinary ambassador, your teacher. We're gonna make Thai jasmine rice from scratch, and then I'm gonna show you how to make masaman curry, but everything I teach you can be applied all the way across the board to any Thai dish. So if you have any questions, let me know. Sounds good to me. I love a good Indian curry, so a Thai curry sounds right up my alley. Great, so first thing we're gonna do is make jasmine rice. Um, do you have some rice next to you? I do, I have some great Thai jasmine rice right in front of me. That's awesome, okay, so give it a smell really quick. It's a very unique, we're both working with what's called Thai homily jasmine rice. So homily translation really is fragrant jasmine rice, right? And it only grows in a few provinces in Thailand and it's a very specific rice. Uh, more importantly, I'm gonna teach you how to make it perfect. So you've got a little pot, yeah, just a little lidded pot, does that work? Yes, sir. Okay, most people uh, make mistakes in how much water to rice. We're gonna make that super easy. I think we're gonna go about a cup and a half to two cups of rice. The brilliant thing is you don't need to measure, okay? With a measuring cup, I'm gonna show you how the grandmas taught us how to cook it. Uh, first thing I want you to do is if you've got some water, uh, we're gonna wash and rinse the rice. About 30 seconds to one minute of washing, uh, we're done. All we're gonna do now is rinse. How you feeling over there? I mean, I'm feeling pretty good, but I'm interested to hear the secret to make it perfect every time, because that sounds delicious. All right, here it is. The secret is how much water. It's more art than it is science. So Got it. Uh, take your index finger really quick. It's kind of says like the number one. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add water until the water line meets the rice. Got it. Perfect, I did it. Beautiful, now I want you to insert the index finger Got until it. the tip just touches the rice, not into the rice. And then you see where that first crease in your knuckle is? Yep. That first line, you're gonna bring the water line up to there. And I know it sounds hokey and mi mysterious. If the water line hits the first crease, that's the perfect amount of water, right there. Got it, all right, I will definitely be using this at home. I mean, that, that is way easier than measuring. I feel like anytime you could skip like measuring exactly and cooking, it's a win. Dude, and this recipe will work for any Thai homily rice. And the way to know if it's from Thailand and the right stuff is that beautiful little green logo on the bag. And it absolutely has to say product of Thailand. Let's get this to a boil, reduced to a simmer. It covers and it goes 18 to 22 minutes and we're gonna turn it off. That's it, that's, that's how you make perfect Thai homily rice. Easy as pie. Curry time. Curry time. So I have a heavy pot. You have a gorgeous gray yeah, pot Yeah, this is beautiful. There. Let's get that over some heat. I would say medium to medium high heat. All right, awesome. Okay, curry paste. Now, there is a Thai curry paste that matches your favorite type of curry. So Thai, red curry, green curry, yellow curry. We're doing masaman curry right here. Take a look at this can really quick. Take a smell. That smells beautiful, wow. It smells like chilies, definitely some onion, garlic. Mmm, it's almost sweet even. It has like kind of like smells spicy with a little bit of sweetness also. You nailed it. We're actually gonna start with the coconut milk. And we have authentic uh, Thai coconut milk here. And another really cool trick is never shake the can of coconut milk when you're making curry. When you don't shake the can, see all this gorgeous stuff on top? Yes, yeah, That's beautiful. pure coconut oil. So we're gonna use this like frying oil, Eitan. So let's take about uh, two or three good spoons of it mm -hmm. and get it right into that pan. And you're gonna hear a sizzle. So oh, I do. we want a moderate sizzle. So if your pan's hot, uh, lower it down. If your pan's cool, raise it up. But we want a nice moderate sizzle. It already sizzle. smells incredible, wow. Right? 
So the thick part of the coconut milk is in the pan. So now let's take about a third of that can of, of curry paste and we're gonna fry it. And it's gonna be, if you cook a lot of American food, it's gonna be similar to a roux. Got so it. I'm gonna turn the heat up now. Yeah, this is already smelling delicious. I mean, I've never cooked coconut milk like this before directly in a pan, and my entire kitchen is already filled with this incredible smell, wow. The Thai word for what we're doing is kua. And kua means to fry, to express, to caramelize. So getting all your flavor is in this method right here. And I'm going for a very thick peanut butter. That's Got the it. visuals that I'm looking for. All right, I think we're at thick peanut butter. Let's now add in the rest of our coconut milk. Brilliant. Yep, just right in. We're working that co coconut milk back into the curry mm -hmm. and uh, let it run to a full boil, like aggressive boil. Because what is the starch that we're eating curry with? Jasmine rice. Yeah. So. Um, I'm, always, I'm always telling people, guys, just thicken your curry until it coats the back of a spoon, which means it'll coat rice. I feel like this is kind of opening up a world of Thai curry that I've yet to enter, yeah. and I already know if I'll be making like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be taking all these different curry bases and just going crazy, so I will be sending you pictures of all of my Thai curry explorations. I'm already excited. Uh, let's fortify this curry. So I've got one shallot and a little bit of onion. I'm just gonna simply be slicing the shallot to just further get more flavor mm -hmm. out of this curry. So if you've got a shallot there, yes. I'm just gonna cut it in half um, from like root to stem and just thinly slice them. Got it right. Once those onions and shallots, throw them right into the curry. They're going to sweeten as you cook those down. So just a half of an onion and that one shallot is plenty. So add them straight into the coconut milk? Right into the coconut milk. Love it. Potatoes and beef are going next. You've got peeled, I'll go unpeeled. And we're just looking for about a three quarter inch large dice. With this amount of curry, we'll, cu we'll cut up both potatoes. So we add the potatoes right in, and let's go to our beef. All right, so potatoes are in, the curry simmering away. We're getting to that coats the back of a spoon mm -hmm. uh, texture. Let's do meat. So flank stick I like for a few reasons. It's beefy, it's got a good flavor, it's got a good chew to it. What we're gonna do, uh, Eitan, is let's, let's cut a strip with the grain, with the grain about uh, palm width. So I'm just going for a strip that is palm width. How and that's that from my sushi days. Yeah, that was gorgeous, man. I don't think we're gonna need much more than that. Um, for this, Got we're it. just making a smaller portion. So now we're gonna take that strip, holding the knife perpendicular to the grain. Uh, yep, now we're gonna, we're gonna actually bias the knife a little bit. So Got it. Uh, I'm gonna take it and angle it thusly. Yes, exactly. So uh, what we're doing is creating a cut that is about two fingers thick and two fingers wide. This is kind of the universal uh, Asian cut for uh, curry, for stir fries. Let's put our beef in, uh, and I'm just looking for about two to three servings, and I'm gonna crank up the heat a bit. Oh, you're talking about half of this, you said? All yeah, right. that looks perfect. Um, this is probably a portion for four over a big old uh, beautiful bowl of Thai jasmine rice. Love it. So uh, Eitan, your beef is in? Yes. Perfect, um, I'm gonna add peanuts now. These are dry roasted unsalted, and they're gonna go in now because I want them to soften a bit. Smells incredible, and peanuts, they just add like a great nuttiness and like savoriness, and literally this curry you picked is the most Aton curry I've ever seen, so I'm so excited to eat this. <laughs> I, can, I can totally understand why, man. The last part is just as important as that most is seasoning. So this is my personal opinion that, 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 that most foods are a balance point between five flavors, right? Mm -hmm. Hot, sour, salty, sweet, and savory. The Thais, we have a specific word that translates to the perfect balance point between all those flavors, and that is yum. And, and that is not a dad joke. Uh, think about the Thai soups that you love, tom yum, the Thai salads, yum nua, yum, the yum. So it's a real word. Oh, uh, right? Yeah, see, there's a moment. Wait, I is the you English word of yum or yummy somehow <laughs> derived from that? It has to be. Yeah, do we have any uh, like historians on set or something that can yeah, help us? Because right? I am convinced, I will be doing research, <laughs> I'm convinced yummy must derive from the Thai word of yum. There's just no way it does it. Okay, and everyone watching, it. yum <laughs> and yummy derive from Thailand. I love it. 
Okay, so yum. So so let's go with spice first. That's already in there because the curry paste had chilies. Step one of yum is done. Let's go to step two. Pick a flavor, Eitan. Um, sweet. Sweet, there it is. Palm sugar, as we talked about. And now, when you have them in clusters, you can grab a knife and just kind of chip away at it like you're chipping away a chocolate block. If your hands can do it, usually they're a little drier than that. There it is. So um, we're gonna add our sugar via uh, Thai palm sugar. Uh, what do we got? We have sweet. Now, okay, tamarind. One of my favorite ingredients. In your hand, we both have Thai tamarind, origin Thailand. You see that little Thai tea on the back? Bam! That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for product of Thailand, and I'm looking for that certification that tells me it's a trusted product and it is the right product. All right, do you have the bottle? Do you have one of these? Because we could talk about the two forms it comes in. In one hand, you have this cylindrical kind of container that's plastic, open it up. That is pure tamarind pulp from Thai tamarinds. It's got that perfect balance of acidity and sweetness. That's how I like to play. This other one is a block of tamarind that basically is uh, the fruit and the seed. Mm -hmm. And you wanna really reconstitute this one part by one part tamarind to water. And then that makes basically this if, if you do have access to this, it is ready to go out of the bottle. Taste that, give it a taste. I want you to taste how clean and sweet and pure that Thai tamarind is. Mmm. It is strong. Talk to me. It, 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 but delicious, wow. Yeah, it's gonna give you a, a hit of acidity and acidity is, is crucial in making a really round plate, like a very balanced plate. Out of the five elements of yum, I feel like acidity is the one that everyone just always forgets when they're cooking at home. And it's the most crucial. It's yes. the most understated, but when it's missing, you, you don't have that perfect dish. So should I add about a teaspoon, you said? About a teaspoon, just really light, because uh, the you want acid to round out the dish, but not dominate. So the last two flavors are all in one bottle. Salt and savoriness. This is Thai fish sauce, mm -hmm. um, and it's anchovy, salt, and water. So it's basically fish in a bottle. There it is, it's the best of fish in the bottle. <laughs> and through that fermentation, that's how you create glutamates, that umami factor. And that's where Thai food gets all its flavor from. How much do we add? I would say about a table, a uh, shy table. I am excited to sit down to a bowl of this over some of that jasmine rice. I mean, yum, yum, yum. I'm ready to go to Thailand. I'm ready, I'll be cooking, <laughs> I'll open up my Masuman shop, and I'm ready. Let's plate it up. So with the rice, it's crucial to take our jasmine rice, and I like to fluff it up a little bit, kind of loosen up the grains. This is, again, Thai homily rice, Thai mm -hmm. jasmine rice. It is the best rice in the world. I mean, you can tell by the aroma. It's sticky in texture. It's got that perfect balance of tooth, toothiness and aromatic. So I'm just gonna put a little dollop here mm -hmm. in the middle. That's perfect. And then I'm just gonna uh, uh, spoon some of this beautiful masaman curry on top. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna garnish with a little bit of fried garlic and a bit of uh, cilantro. Looks absolutely beautiful. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to dig in. Let's do this, grab a spoon. Let's, uh, let's do a cheers from New York and Los Angeles. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, my friend. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, man. Mmm. Yes. Creamy, savory. Mm. The beefiness is there. That coconut milk and that Thai jasmine rice, that homily rice, really kind of puts it together because of the starchiness and the stickiness. What do you think, man? I'm so cool, and I, I was so excited, I took way too much in my first bite. Eitan did not take a TV bite, just remember that. He took a real life bite, and that's why I, we know we did a good job. I know we did a good job. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I was so excited to, to eat this. I forgot that we're on camera and that I should have taken a tiny bite so that I could react, and I'm over here just like chomping away for like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely delicious. The homily rice is just so delicious with that thick coconut curry. It has the perfect level of flavor. I mean, it's like a little bit spicy. It has a little bit of the tang. It has some acidity to it. And I just mean with the rice, like, to be totally honest, Jet, love you, bro, but I just want to keep on eating. You know what? I'm not going to let you because uh, you've made my dish. I'm excited to make your dish. 
All right, chat, thank you for teaching me how to do this. Now it is time for the teacher to become the student because I'm going to be showing you how to take some classic Thai ingredients and turn them into this kind of fusion of Thai bruschetta. Are you ready? I'm ready, let's do this. 